people don't like new stuff. Now that's a real problem. It's a real problem for everybody in this room because we deal with new stuff. The reason you are here today is to see new stuff. The name of the conference is the next web, right? It's not today's web, it's not yesterday's web, it's the next one. You want to see the new stuff. And so everybody in this room, you guys are, you're kind of weird. Because most people don't want the new stuff. And yet, we have all been living for the past 40 or 50 years underneath the driving force which has constantly brought us new things. If we skip 50 years on from the beginning of the Rite of Spring, and I'll get back to that story, but 50 years later from that, Gordon Moore, who was the co-founder of Intel, is in his laboratory, and he, he looks at the sales brochures that Intel made of the integrated circuits, the microchips that they were making. And he realized there was an interesting pattern that every year, for the same amount of money, they could fit twice as many components onto their microchips. So he wrote this down as a memo, and it was circulated amongst the engineers of Intel. And in the early 60s, they were too busy. They were a startup. They didn't pay much attention to it. But in the 70s, when they were bigger, they looked at it again, and they found that the observation was still true. For, the, for a certain amount of money, the amount of things they could fit onto a microchip would double every year. It was true in the 70s, it was true in the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, it's true today. And we know this now as Moore's Law, the idea that for a given price, computing power doubles every year. Now, this is extraordinarily odd. We've never had a time in human history where our tools get twice as good as they were the year before. Horses, swords, plows didn't get twice as good every year. Now, there's a reason for this. The reason is we use digital technology to create the next generation of digital technology. You don't use a sword to make another sword. I mean, you use a horse to make another horse. That's true. That's true. But after a while, the horses stop getting any better. And so all of our institutions, our governments, our political philosophies, our sciences, our um, and knowledge of economics, the very basis of our cultures are based around a time, because they come from the past 1,000 years, 2,000 years, 3,000 years, because they're based on a time where we didn't have this doubling of power every year. Having that doubling of power is very strange. And yet, everybody in this room has fundamentally absorbed the concept of Moore's Law. I mean, you all know it, right? It's the, it's the thing that means that, Steve, uh, that um, Tim Cook can stand on stage like this in September in San Francisco and instantly make the phone in your pocket shit. Because Moore's Law has doubled the capability of the chips inside it. So this has created this intense period of change. Now, that change is so fundamental that we're having to rewrite business textbooks. We have to rethink the way that we plan our economies. We have to rethink the way that politics works. Because there's a rule that is being developed that we've realized is true, that if we ignore a technology today because it's rubbish, it will kill you in 10 years' time. We call this the Kodak mistake. Let me explain. In 1978, Kodak, a company that made photographic film and cameras, they invented the digital camera. It was about this big. It was large. And it could take one photograph, 
that was 0.1 megapixels. So it had the resolution of a chessboard. And it recorded that photograph onto audio cassette tape. Find an old person and ask them what that is. You put the audio cassette tape in, you would take the picture, it would record the image onto the audio cassette tape. That one image would take seven minutes to load onto the tape. You then take the tape away, put it into the one other machine, it would take seven minutes to load into that machine, you could see the image. And so when the engineer took that device and they rolled it into the Kodak boardroom, the Kodak board said, yeah, but it's shit, isn't it? And we make Kodachrome, the most beautiful photographic film in the world. Why would we fund this? But that turned out to be one of the biggest mistakes in history. Because, sure, in 1978, it wasn't a very good camera. And in 1981, it wasn't a very good camera. In 1984, digital cameras weren't very good at all. In 1988, they weren't very good. In 1992, they were still pretty terrible. 1996, not very good. 1997, I become the technology reporter for the Times newspaper in London. And one of the first articles I write is an article that says, digital cameras, hmm. In 1998, there were some very expensive digital cameras which rich people took on skiing holidays. They were still terrible. But by 1999, they were getting quite good. The Canon Ixus came out, and it was pretty impressive. And by 2001, digital cameras were great. By 2005, people were stopping using photographic film entirely. In 2008, when the iPhone came out, the first year of the iPhone, with a camera on the back, more photographs were taken with the iPhone than had previously been taken at all in all of human history. On the day that Kodak went bankrupt, having never done digital photography, Instagram was bought by Facebook for $800 million.